Hey guys, Nick here from Nick's Taxes. Thanks so much for tuning in to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about ETFs, exchange traded funds. Now in my previous video, I talked about stock market investing for beginners. So if you haven't watched that yet, I suggest you go back, check that out. I cover a lot of the basics of stock market investing uh, and then come back and finish the rest of this video. So ETFs are a great way to diversify your portfolio without having to make a lot of different or separate investments. It's also a great way, I think, to start out in investing because of the fact that you get such great diversification with an ETF. So let's say, for example, you're starting out and you wanna buy some major players on the US stock market. You know, you know that Apple is gonna be a good one, Microsoft, Amazon, Walmart, these are all big players and all good investments. However, if you're just starting out and you don't have a whole lot of money to invest to begin with, you're gonna find that these are really expensive buys to start out with and you might run out of money really quick or you might not even have enough to even buy one stock. Like Amazon right now is worth over 1,800 USD and that's Amazon by itself. And then we got to factor in the fact that every trade that we do has probably a five to $10 commission. So investing in individual stocks to start out with and trying to diversify can get real expensive real quick. Now this is where an ETF comes in because an ETF allows us to own little pieces of each of those big, big stocks with one price. So for example, the big stocks that I just named, your Apples, your Amazons, your Microsoft, I can buy an ETF under the ticker code SPY and that runs for about $300. So for $300, I can get exposure to all those major players without having to pay that major ticket price for their stock. So if you're into investing, uh, you've definitely heard the importance of diversification or to not put all your eggs in one basket. This basically means that you're not putting all of your investment money into one stock because sure it's great when that stock goes up in value, uh, you're gonna make out like a bandit, but if that stock goes down, you're gonna really hurt and there's, you know, there's nothing you can do about it except wait it out or take that loss. An ETF gives you exposure to different companies and different industries. So if one company is doing bad, there's a good chance that another company is doing well and they'll balance out. And hopefully in the long run, you get a nice steady increase over the years. So an ETF is a collection of stocks, bonds, and other financial elements that are wrapped into one trading fund. An ETF is sold on all the major stock exchange. So like your Toronto Stock Exchange or your New York Stock Exchange are gonna be a couple popular places where you can find certain ETFs. So like I said before, opposed to individual stocks, you can actually own fractional shares in individual companies through this ETF. And the nice thing as well is that you're also eligible for dividends on those stocks that you own that pay dividends based on the fraction of the stock that you own. And for most ETFs, all the dividends are collected and are paid out on a quarterly basis. Now, the one potential negative to an ETF is that they do have an expense fee for basically running this fund, okay? So this fund is kind of passively managed and how it gets worked into is called an MER or a management expense ratio. And you'll see this when you look up your ETF and you'll see this somewhere in the details section and most are quite low. However, this expense ratio is based on the amount that you've invested into that ETF. So let's say for example, there is an MER of 0.06%. For every $10,000, I'm gonna owe an expense fee of $6 and that's gonna be on an annual basis. So every year for my $10,000 investment, I'm gonna pay $6. Now it's important to note that this expense is based on the amount you have invested, not the amount 
or not the value of the amount that you currently have in that ETF. So if I invest 10K and when my expense fee is due and my ETF value is worth 15,000, it doesn't matter. And on the contrary, if the value of my investment is worth less, say $5,000, I'm still gonna be charged because I have $10,000 invested into the ETF. Well, an ETF tries to mimic the performance of an index by owning either all of the stocks or a huge collection of those stocks in that specific index. An index represents an entire group or like an entire sector. So you can think of an ETF as like a sample because you're getting little pieces of everything within that index. One of the most popular ones in the US is the S&P 500 index, which mimics the US market and it's home to the top 500 largest publicly traded companies in the US. This is where your Amazon, your Apple, your Walmart all come into play. While you can't buy the S&P 500, you can buy an ETF such as SPY, which mimics the results of the S&P 500. So an ETF like SPY owns stocks in proportion to what the S&P 500 is. So while the S&P 500 goes up, so should the ETF SPY. So if you have confidence in a particular index, a ETF is an effective and efficient way to invest in that index with having a very hands-off approach. I recommend Although I'm not a financial advisor, I do recommend looking at ETFs if you are just starting out in investing. Um, it's a great way to diversify your portfolio and to get a hands-off approach while investing in some of the best stocks on the market. All right, so that is everything you need to know about ETFs. Uh, let me know in the comments below which ETF fund is your favorite. If you got value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. Um, I'm gonna be making new investment videos on a regular basis, so please stay tuned. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And that's all, take care guys, appreciate it, bye.